Hi everyone. Today I want to share this trifold card made with the Best Catch stamp set. It's my brother's birthday this month and um, we're going to a group party. It's my mother's, brother's, and daughter's birthday next week all in a row. And so we're having a party and I needed to make some cards. And I make so many pretty flowery kind of cards. It's nice to make a more masculine card. And my brother is definitely an outdoors person. He likes to go hunting and fishing and he loves to be out on the water. So this is a perfect card for him, perfect stamp set. Now for the sample here, I used all from the stamp set for you, Dad. It's your day. And I'm gonna switch up this and make it happy birthday, it's your day for my brother's card. So we're gonna do that one next. So I wanted to show this card. I think it's really fun. I love this crackle background stamp, which is one I haven't used. I have not inked it up yet until today. And this the first time I've used the stamp set too. Now the stamp set comes as a bundle, if you like, with some dies. And the dies for this are really fun. All right, you've got the fisherman here. It's I think this is fly fishing, which I don't think my brother does. I don't know, I don't think he does but um, I think he'll still enjoy the outdoorsy feel of this card. Um, and I could be wrong anyway, because I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> so uh, there's a fisherman here. He's casting off right here. And there's a large fish. Again, I don't know what kind of fish that is, so maybe you can let me know. And some smaller fish, which is what I used here on the dangly part, because there's not a stamp for the smaller fish. These are like little accent fish. These are the catch of the day there. And you've got some grasses with some cattails there. Again, not a stamp set for that one. That is a fun accent that you can do. Now you can sponge these if you want the cattails to be brown. I think that it's perfectly acceptable to use them as an accent as is. These would be nice as a, in black as a silhouette along, along a sunset too. Uh, so anyway, you've got the cattails and the, the grasses, the fish, this little basket. Um, but also there's a few more. The big fish, the little fly here and the hat are all uh, dies. But then you also have an extra little uh, fly right here, which is really cute. Now this fish here, this larger one, has a little pop-out wing, not wing, fin, <laughs> thinking of birds, uh, a little pop-out fin here, and that's really a fun part of the die. It cuts that out for you right in the die itself. So this is a really fun die collection. The fisherman has a die also, but I didn't use it here. Really great dies and a really fun stamp set. I love this drawing style. It's like a sketch, sketchbook, and I'm going to use it with some watercoloring because I love to watercolor, as you probably know. <laughs> so here we go. I start with a card base cut at five and a half, but not by eight and a half. So you're going to have to cut your paper the long way, your cardstock. Um, and you're going to have this leftover bits because you can't get two cards out of the cardstock with this because it needs to be a half an inch longer because we're doing a trifold. We need to stick it to something. Now you could do something different. You could make the wood piece longer and have it go over the side, you know, and that way you don't have this. Instead, it's on the back, but I thought this was cleaner. Uh, you can decide how you want to do that. So I cut this at five and a half by nine and then it's scored at four and a quarter and eight and a half. Okay, and then I've got this piece of wood texture. I love this designer series paper. It comes in a six by six pack at um, all different wood tones and colors. It's really fun, so I love this one. And we're gonna use that as our second layer. And then on the inside, I've got a piece of um, shimmery white and I chose shimmery white because I'm doing a little bit of water coloring and shimmery white holds up to watercolor it's got a coating of that little shimmer to it which is going to stand up to this water coloring technique here down at the bottom it's not really a technique it's just a simple wash and um, it's going to hold up to that better than whisper white you could also go with uh, watercolor paper however watercolor paper has a texture to it and it's a little bit harder to get a clean stamp image on the watercolor paper and you know, sometimes I'm willing to do that, and sometimes um, I'm just gonna go ahead with my shimmery white. It's not so shimmery that it's distracting. It's just a little tiny hint of shimmer, which is just fine. And you know, you can barely see it. It shows up sometimes on the fish, which is actually a good thing, because fish are kind of shiny and shimmery. So I also use shimmery white for the fish. 
Now the colors I'm using are in colors. It's Tranquil Tide and Lemon Lime Twist, which are retiring at the end of May. So you might want to grab those while you can. I think they're great colors and I love them all together. And I'm even using another in color, Berry Burst, here at the bottom that's also retiring. So we've got that going on. And then I also have a little accent of Early Espresso and Soft Suede. Okay, those are my colors. So let's go ahead and start putting it together. So let's do the stamping first. This is my inside. It is five by five by three and three quarters. And then I have some scrap shimmery white for my mystery, mystery fish. Is it a trout? I don't know. I feel like I kind of colored it like it was a trout. I'm not even sure if that's true. <laughs> I'm not a fisherman. I just eat fish. And even that, not so much. I eat some. Okay. We're going to go ahead and ink it up. Now I'm inking it up in stays on ink because I'm going to watercolor and stays on won't smear in the watercolor. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up, put that aside. And then I'm going to do the same with my fisherman also in stays on ink. I'm going to do him kind of towards the bottom here. Now on a scrap of soft suede. I used early espresso ink to ink up my fishing basket. I've already done that. You don't need to watch me do that. And I have already cut out with the dyes, the grasses, a little fish, uh, no it's a fly, and some various little fishes here. Put those aside. Okay, we're going to paint the fish. Now the fish is really simple and I did a very simple painting on this. I didn't go real detailed. And I think that can be fun and to um, show that you don't really need to go super. You don't have to be a painter. You can just do a real quick wash and it'll look great. Now when I paint, I like to have a stamp and scrub next to me. <laughs> I do this whether I'm painting with cards or even regular painting. I think it's fun to just wipe your brush off on the little fibers. It kind of cleans them off. It's fast and fun. Okay, so the colors, like I said, I'm trying to stick with simple colors here, and we're using Tranquil Tide as the main color of our fish. Now this is an old style pad where you squeeze the pad and ink goes into the lid, and then you paint right from there. I love that they were able to do that, but the newer ones don't do that, so I'll show you how I get around that with the um, blue that I use. All right, so I'm just picking up a little bit of ink. I don't want to go real heavy, so I'm just kind of going off to the side. I have a lot of water on my um, brush tip and I'm just adding a little bit of ink and I'm going to start in the area that I want the darkest first just in case you have so much ink on your aqua painter that you don't know how much ink is on there it's nice to start in the area you want darkest which is going to be towards the back here and then I'm going to come around and just lightly and I want less water here because I don't want to overpower the fish Lightly blend some Tranquil Tide onto the fish's back, and that's it. You don't have to go in the lines, you don't have to worry about these spots. Just adding some Tranquil Tide. I'm going to go down the back here, and then I'm going to add some to the tail fin. You don't want your brush too wet that it starts to be uncontrollable. It's... There we go. Got the other side here. All right, and then I wanted my uh, fish's fans to be dark too. I don't know if that's accurate for a fish. <laughs> so if you know more about fish, you can paint it a different way. And I did want these to be darker. Maybe that's a little too dark. It might be a little heavy. I'm going to darken that fin so that the other fins are all darker. <laughs> so this one doesn't look so heavy. All right. And that is all I'm doing with Tranquil Tide on the fish. Okay. 
Next I'm going to grab Lemon Lime Twist. And I just clean my brush on my Stampin' Scrub. Now I can go right into the Lemon Lime Twist. Now here I just want um, just a little wash down his tummy body back area, I guess, side. There we go, that's it with Lemon Lime Twist. And then with Berry Burst, now this I want very light. So I'm going to clean off my Lemon Lime Twist. You can even squeeze the barrel to get a drop of water coming out. Now this I want really light, so I'm going to use a lot of water. But I don't want, because I want to pale it down a little bit. But I don't want my brush super wet, so I kind of tap it on my stamp and scrub, or you can kind of get a little bit off on your worksheet here. And you're just going to add a little bit of this to his underside, and then darker inside his mouth. Okay. Now I just realized that I ignored a fin. So <laughs> I'm going to go back and add that fin real quick. Go on to our little fisherman. Now I wanted him to have a little bit of color. I didn't want him to be completely black and white, but I didn't add a lot. So I grabbed some Sahara sand. Again, this is an old style pad. So I'm squeezing some ink into my lid. Clean my brush. And I thought, well, he's probably going to be wearing some kind of khaki pants. I don't know. Seems like that's what my brother wears a lot. Maybe a khaki jacket. Going real simple here. I don't want a lot of colors. This is just, um, just so he's not so black and white, whereas the fish is so colorful. So I just added a little bit of Sahara sand. And then I went in and found some petal pink. bit to his face. And then the blue I chose is blueberry, ooh, the lights are getting brighter, blueberry bushel. And um, like I said, this is one of the newer pads, so squeezing it is not really a great option. You can, you can get a little bit of ink in there. I think you might have noticed on the petal pink that I had some ink in my lid. Um, what I sometimes do for that, and this one has ink in it too, but I try not to squeeze them. I'm not sure how, how great it is. So sometimes I just take a little reinker and I drop some ink into the lid with the bottle from my reinker. Another option is to take a small stamp and press it into the lid and, or into the ink pad, and you can go like this to add that ink to your lid, or paint straight from the little block, which is what I'm going to do right now. And again, I don't want this super dark. So I'm going to go in my darker areas first just to kind of see what's on the brush. And then I'm going to take some of that ink away and just do a quick little wash here. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. Very simple and fast. So there's our coloring done. And we're going to go ahead and cut out the fish. I couldn't pre-cut him out because I needed to, to um, stamp and color him. And it's easier to color on a larger piece, I think. So you just line him up. And it's blocked here because there are these extra cuts. And so you kind of really have to make sure that you're looking at areas like the mouth. Make sure that it goes in in the right space and around these fins, and then you're good. So I'm going to cut that out, and I'll be right back. All right, another stamp that we're using is the It's Your Day. i go ahead and do that. Get all my stamping done. And then I'm going to choose a greeting from the Itty Bitty Birthday Stamp Set. I love that they have so many different birthdays on this one because you've got a fancy one that can go on a very pretty card. You've also got this 
flat font, very basic, that you can use to stamp um, for a kid birthday, or I'm going to use maybe this one for my brother's birthday. I like that there's a belated birthday. That's good, too. So there's lots of good birthday stamp sets on here. I love them. I haven't used them all yet, but I have used this one. So I'm going to take off my dad and stick on my happy birthday. And I'm going to find a scrap. Do you save your little scraps? I have some for every color. I'm hoping I have a little scrap of shimmery white so that my whites are all the same. Here's one. I like using up my scraps. <laughs> See if I can get this nice and even. Yay! That's how I kind of cut a flag in mine. I go up the center and then meet it up on both ends. Okay, now for our cuts to our card. So this is going to go down like this, and these are going to get attached like so. So I'm going to do some cutting first, and I'm using my rectangle stitched framelits. I cannot say how much I love these enough. They are so awesome. So you get so many sizes on these, and the sizes that I'm using, I forgot to stamp my crackle. Let's stamp our crackle first. Okay, so the crackle is going to go on the end without the seam here, and it's a background stamp. And I left my big background um, block at a space I use for stamp camps. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to use my Stamparatus. Now, normally you would use this to line things up or stamp multiples. I'm just doing it for this one. It's actually really nice for the um, large blocks. All right, so I'm going to put my card down. And I'm inking that up with early espresso. Oh, I didn't even have ink on there. <laughs> I guess it is a good thing that I used my Stamparatus. Forgot to ink the corner. There we go. And I don't have any up there. There we go. Okay. So that is the Crackle background stamp, and I think it's really a fun stamp. I really like it. Okay, now we can cut out. Now from a piece of early espresso I'm going to create my frame and I did that by let me show you all the sizes. I did that by combining the second largest so I went one, two, and fourth. So you've got a bigger space in between. So I made that for my frame in early espresso and I already cut that out. But this one, you're not going to do that. You're going to take away the outside one and just use that inside one. Okay, so you're going to try to line that up in the center and cut that out. And then on the wood grain piece, you went down yet one more size so that there's a nice little uh, lip showing of that wood grain. So I've got the second and fourth, and then also the fifth smallest. Let's see, and that's going to be on this one. And I cut those out. So I'm going to go do that and be right back. Now this I'm using on something else. Now when cutting out this one, I wanted to just be absolutely certain that I liked where it was, so. 
I put it here because what if you didn't get this exactly centered then you'd be sad if this one wasn't right so I went like this and lined it up making sure that I have this butted up against the side and then if you like it you can lift that up and then grab a little post-it note and stick it down in the corners. Double check that I like it. I do, and then I'm going to cut this one out. All right, now you've got these two fun little frames, and you can use those on another card because they have that stitching on them and they're still cute. So they're not scrap, use them on something. In fact, I will use them on something and show you at a later date. So um, <laughs> maybe join or subscribe or join my Facebook group. I'm trying to get a Facebook group together where people can request things or um, share. You can share things that they've made. We have a great demonstrator group that's just for demonstrators. It's sponsored by Stampin' Up! But customers can't go there. So I think it would be fun if we had a spot like that for customers. So I've got one called Beth's Idea Sharing Group. Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group. And I would love for you to join me there. That would be fun. Okay, so now we're going to line this up. So, I'm going to be very careful to get this on straight. <laughs> Can't think which is one side I want on top. I think this one. I'm going to line that up with the fold line. So now we've got our card. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick my fisherman down. And you can sign your name down here because it won't show through. And the fishing tackle thing is going to cover this here. So you've got a hint of the man showing through, but the main focal image is going to be that um, fish. Go ahead and fold these down. Now sometimes when you add, you just have that, it's just slightly too big, you know, like a sliver of an inch, just a sliver. I think I might be okay. Let's see, let's fold it in and see if I can close this without buckling. Nope. So I'm gonna just take a little hair off of here, just the smallest bit, not even really a measurement. And that is gonna help it to close a flatter. There. Okay, so now on this one, I attached my grasses, and I actually attached them to the back, but kind of poking through the side. So you're going to kind of set it up like this. So you can add a little bit of adhesive here, or easier to add some at the bottom of the grasses. And I went with blue dots just because I think they're easy to work with. And they fit nicely on this little piece that's got a cut in it. Okay, so you're going to put it in the edge, but sticking some of the grass through the window. Just that down. And that's what's on this one. And then the happy birthday up in the top, and that's going to get covered up by this flap here. And again, I like to use glue dots, I think because I can reposition them for just a few seconds anyway, if you pick them up kind of quick. Yeah, a little bit of give. So to make sure that it was completely hidden, I held it on this little window area and then kind of folded my card. That way I knew it would be hidden. And then we've got our little fishing fly or lure. I think they're called flies. I'm not a fisher person, but I think they're called flies. I think I know that much. So I like to hold not sure how they go. All right, and then we've got our frame, and for that I used the foam adhesive strips. I love these, and they're really great for these frames. So I'm going to stick that up for a little dimension. I wanted it to kind of pop up a little bit. And they come in these long strips, perfect for this application. Right, 
And that is going to go right on this opening. And we're going to take our, I like on this one, I, I know I have so many adhesives. You can go back to your glue dots and it's already on your desk, but I'm going to use this liquid glue and attach fishing basket here and then up in the corner I thought it would be fun to have a little hanging group of fish that we've caught here let's see maybe I'll go with this little group thing maybe three is good I just cut a bunch and I wanted them to hang from something and I just love linen thread I think it's kind of rusticy looking and it looks nice with the fishing basket so we're going to use some linen thread And to thread it, I'm going to use this little dental flosser. <laughs> it's great for kids with braces. So it's in your dental aisle. They come in this uh, little pack like this. And my son had braces, and I had a customer actually, hi Lois, tell me about this idea for um, threading buttons. And so I keep these on my desk at all times. They're so awesome for threading things. So you're just going to take it, and you loop the linen thread through the little, little hoop, and grab your fish. Let's see, we'll go with a uh, lemon lime twist. And then I'm going to throw on a Tranquil Tide and another Lemon Lime Twist. However you want to do it. And then I just tie it a simple little knot. There we go, there's today's catch. Now I wanted them to not just lay on top of each other and you know so you can't see the Tranquil Tide, so I actually did add a little bit of adhesive behind and kind of splay them out a little bit. So you can do something like that if you like. There we go. So you can see all of them. And then I just attached that in the top. And I can cut off some of this excess. And you can use that liquid glue again. I like my glue dot for this. I kind of ball it up so it's smaller. right in the corner and then I'm going to put the knot right there. Now if you want that fish to stay in place you can add another little bit of glue behind there. I go through a lot of glue dots. I like liquid glue but it's so nice to be able to quickly use the glue dots and not have to worry about you know going like this and having it slide off. So there is the outside and then the fish can get popped right in the middle. Now remember I told you that fin can come out a little bit. You can kind of Pop him out just a tiny bit. And then we're going to use dimensional so he kind of gets risen up in line with the frame. Now I've got mini dimensionals which are awesome for these little areas like these fins. There we go. And then I'm going to use some bigger dimensionals. I love the mini dimensionals. They're such a great addition. Right there, maybe one more. When you um, watercolor, the cardstock tends to curl just a little bit, so you need a little more um, dimensionals than normal, just because you want it to not be curled up and look and funky. Okay, I think we're done. We're going to put this down. I hope you enjoyed my card, and I hope that you will come back again, see what we do with our scraps, <laughs> and join me on Facebook. Show me what you're doing with the Best Catch stamp set. And there you go. What do you think? I think it's fun. I hope you like it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.